spiritual father, if you will, that return to us our, our nationality, our divine creed. Um, it's imperative that we as Moorish Americans, being members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, that again we heed to this doctrine, that we heed to the prophet's holy instructions and divine laws. Um, he is an angel sent from Allah to redeem us. And that part of the redemption is by way of the Moorish Divine and National Movement. The Moorish Divine and National Movement is a program that was put in place to groom the Negro into becoming a Moorish American, to groom the African American to becoming a Moorish American, to groom the nigger part itself to become a Moorish American, to, uh, to groom the people that are considered so-called, that are um, named so-called black into Moorish America. We get these pieces of, we get these, these, um, these jewels, if you will, these keys. And again, it's important that we, that we read and we study them for our own understanding, as they say. This is an important movement to us because this is the only salvation from which, uh, this is the only movement from which salvation is assured, all right, for Asiatics in America. We will lead the way. By no means am I being, being radical or agitating towards any group. But if anything, the Moorish Science Temple of America, this Moorish Divine and National Movement, will be the flagship, will spearhead our people and, 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 and raise our people up, rather, to full citizenship, to, 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 to the status that we deserve. It has been far too long that we have been considered and treated like second-class citizens in a place that we have built. I'm not going to even say that we have assisted in building, that we have built. Asiatics, whether from Africa, or from South America, all melanated, all melanated, olive, olive tone, woolly to wavy hair people came to America and built this country up. It is our divine right. 
It is our lost estate that we must regain, Islam. Uh -huh. Therefore, it's in, it's, we have to take this movement seriously. We're not, on, we're not, we're, we're, this is not for play play. We are, we are custodians of people's lives. And so this is the reason why I'm reading this, this caveat as a reminder to not just the people in the grove, but even to myself, because my, my words must go past my ears before anyone else. And it reads, Moors are men, upright, independent, and fearless, who care for their loved ones and follow the prophet to a destiny which is not uncertain or unknown. Islam? They are fortified by the impregnable doctrine built upon love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. It is therefore folly at its greatest height for smelly culprits with their insidious plans to invade such a realm. All right? Now, I want to stop right there because the prophet says more is our men. And so we have to make sure that we keep this in context because our prophet by no means is a chauvinist. He was using the language at that time. So when we were talking, when he's talking about men, he's talking about brothers and sisters. He's talking about men and women. All right? And then he also says that we are to follow our prophet to a destiny which is not uncertain or unknown. We as Moorish Americans, if we are well astute in the doctrine of the Moorish Science Temple of America and this Moorish Divine and National Movement, we know what the end result is. So this is not some so-called cult or so-called uh, 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 secret society, if you will, where we're, we're laboring for some type of spook or, or, or mystic ending. We know what the end results are. We know what we're, what we're striving for. So if we know what the goal is, we should be moving each and every day at least one step towards their goal. Islam? Islam. Which is not uncertain or unknown. They are fortified by the impregnable doctrine built upon love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So the question that I raise to you, brothers and sisters, is how much are you studying our doctrine? To draw from the Baptist Christian doctrine, you can't be lukewarm for Allah. You're either going to be hot or cold. So we can't, when we talk about extending the learning, because we have uh, a, a lot of brothers and sisters talk about this coin phrase, extending the learning. Well, let me tell you something. When I extend my arm, it's a part of, still a part of my body, right? So you, even if you're extending the learning, if you will, you can't, stray, you can't stray away from what the foundation is. So being fortified means being pure, being, being immutable. That means when somebody comes to you questioning the prophet, you don't necessarily have to give a direct answer, but you have to know within your mind and your heart and your spirit that this is the way to go. This is what we're talking about. I had a brother that I'll be uh, uh, bringing up to the rostrum, and in this very short time that I have learned, that says when you talk to someone from China and you ask them what their nationality is, they're Chinese, you don't ask them to verify if they're Chinese. If you talk about somebody from Turkey or from Italy, and you say, well, where are you from? And you say, well, and they say, well, I'm from Italy. My nationality is Italian American. You don't ask them to prove it. Going back to chapter 15 in our Moorish Holy Quran, the Prophet Jesus, alayhi salam, said, who demands a test? Islam. So when you know that you're a Moorish American, you know that you're a Moorish American. Moorish American is not just a noun, it's a verb. Islam? Islam. Moorish American cannot be just a badge that you wear every Friday. It cannot just be another notch on your conscious belt in the community. It has to be what we do every day. We have to live and breathe this. It has to be literally a part of every part. That's where that hammer comes in, right? And then the prophet goes on saying, by therefore it is folly at its greatest height, but its greatest height for smelly culprits with the insidious plans to invade such a realm. And this falls on you. 
Because if you allow someone to come in your house and tear down your house, you are at fault. Because you allowed that to happen because you are supposed to be fortified. You are supposed to be pure, unmixed. You're supposed to have no inhibitions in who you are and what you represent in the, in, in the work that you are called to do. So if anybody comes in and is able to steer this temple in the wrong direction, it's not only my fault. It's the fault of the members in all Moorish Americans that 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 um that are in this temple. We cannot allow that to happen. There has been so many times in other organizations that people have been allowed to tear it from the inside out. We have to build a culture within the Moorish Science Temple of America of trust, of understanding. And that comes with sacrifice. How many of us, not that many of us rather, understand the art of sacrifice? We talk about it, but do we really know what it is? Do we really practice it just as much as we practice making our soul? Do we know what the art of sacrifice is? Just this past Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, depending on um, how you practice your Al-Islam, we were in Id al -Aib. And that is the feast of the sacrifice in secular Islam, in Sunni Islam. That is the feast of the sacrifice. And they're talking about Ibrahim or Abraham alayhi salam that was willing to sacrifice the very thing that he loved to praise Allah. And that was the test. And some would say, well, why would Allah do that? Those who, who question the whole concept of religion, the, 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 the whole concept of Allah, the whole concept of a higher deity and being inspired by that deity. They question, well, why would a being have to sacrifice his, the, the very thing that he loved, made in the flesh, his son? Why do you have to sacrifice anything? Because that is justice. You get out what you put in. We have to know that you want to sacrifice every grain of your spirit, of your thought, for this movement, for Allah, for the Prophet. This is the only way we'll know that you are about this life. And it doesn't have to be to an extreme like the Prophet Abraham salam, did with his son. But sacrifice is something that you know, that you're giving something that you know it's dear to you, whether it can be time, whether it can be money, whether it can be services. It can be anything. We have to know genuinely, this is what you're about, that this is what you're willing to sacrifice. And not many of us are willing to sacrifice that. When we talk about blessings, blessings from the etymology point come, is a derivative of blood. So that means that, <laughs> essentially, if you give your blood, that, that you're supposed to receive this gift or you're supposed to be in Allah's favor you're supposed to so-called be under grace of Allah but that's just another demonstration but the point that I'm making is is this movement is not to be played with we are supposed to take this movement seriously we are supposed to let people who are interested in this movement let them know that this is, this is to be taken seriously it doesn't mean that we're going to make some mistakes. We're going, to, we're going to hit some blumps and some bumps. But these are going to be genuine acts of piety, genuine acts of uplifting fallen humanity. This is not a social club. This is not something you can just hop in and hop out anytime you want to and think that it's going to be there. Islam? Islam. I'm going to read on and then I'm going to, I'm going to um, yield the floor. They try and try, but their own bad planning brings down the wrath upon their heads like the sword of Damocles had. Intrigue and scurrilous cunnings find a difficult path to travel within the ranks of the Moors. Also, our prophet is telling us this is how, this is how tight we're supposed to be. Anybody that is familiar with, um, with the ranks and making salah in, 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 in the masjid, as Sunni Muslims or in secular Islam, that you must tighten your ranks. That's a, that is actually a demonstration of power. Scientifically, there's a, there's a theory about, about prayer, if you will. 
And it says that, that prayer works because when you have a group of people that are on one accord, that has this uh, a similar thought process, then the brain the brain waves, if you will, are supposed to emit and and and, and project out and, and 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 bring things bring something into manifestation. That is the theory. I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you what I what I what I've read in, in on several occasions about prayer. And if we don't believe in that, if we want to move the, remove the spookism out of that, if anything, it's an affirmation. And you feel that energy and that sincerity from your brother. That energy, that, that warmth. From your brother or sister rapper. So this is how tight your ranks are supposed to be in the Morris Science Temple of America. That no one is supposed to be able to tear it down. No one at all. So when they come through, it's supposed to be almost like a net. They can't even penetrate. They bounce right back off. And it goes on by saying, this is so because the Moorish movement has been well planned by the Prophet Noah Ali, whose latent powers are abundant, unknown, and may be called into action as a matter of defense at any moment. Islam. Prophet says, when love, truth, peace, freedom have been violated, justice must then take its course. That is the work, that is the duty of a prophet. We always think about it about, and I'm going to go back to the Sword of Damocles in a moment. We always talk about justice, justice, and justice. But the prophets are the justice that must take its course. When we go back to our Quran questions, it says, what is the duty of a prophet? To save the nations from the wrath of Allah. That's love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice being violated. On the, on the cusp of being violated. So Allah is saying, okay, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to send you somebody so you can be an example. You better listen to him. If you don't listen to him, this is what's going to happen. And I'll even go so far as to say, this, this is our, our flood as Asiatics. Regardless of, 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 of what uh, form of spirituality you want to uh, uh, subscribe to, rather. This is our flood. More Science Temple of America is that, that salvation on the ark. Matter of fact, I'm not too far because we're talking about salvation. We're talking about the cares of the world in or on these Quran questions being represented by the water. These lessons are for you to learn how to swim so you can bring other people back. This is the interesting thing about this particular ark is that Allah is allowing us to go out into the cares of the world and bring people in for the shores of salvation. All praises are due to Allah. So then we talk about the sword of Damocles. We talk about the sword of Damocles because there's been many times where these, these culprits, if you will, these invaders, they try to come in and, and ultimately they, 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 want to, they, they want to have the throne. If they can't have the throne, then they, they'd rather tear down the throne. That story, of the, that, that story of Damocles goes as follows. You have this, this, this man by the name of Damocles in Greek culture that wants to be the ruler. He goes in and he sees all these things that's happening. These wondrous things that's, that the ruler has, is being bestowed, as, as having bestowed upon him. And he says, well, ruling is easy. I can do that. And the ruler says, well, I'll tell you what. For one day, I'll let you be the ruler. I'll let you be the king. I'll let you be the Caesar. And Damocles is like, word, I'm going to do that. And so the next day, when Damocles comes to the throne and sits on the throne, he notices that there's a sword that's hanging over his head by a thread of horse hair. And that is a message saying that if anything happens, the sword will fall on my head before anyone else. And if anybody knows that, if, people, if you don't understand that, study Haruk Patak. Islam? Islam. Haruk Patak is the deity of the comedic deity that before justice must be served on anyone else, he will cut his head off his own self. He will check himself. Islam? Islam. <clears throat> so we have to be fortified in this unpregnable doctrine. 
It goes on finally that in his last words in this particular article goes on by saying the Prophet Noble Drew Ali knows the people within the ranks who are interested. They are the vanguard of the movement as the Moors hordes increase here in America. All the Moors, all of the Moors are active and not passive. I'm going to say that again. All of the Moors are active and not passive. Said Prophet Noble Drew Ali knows the people within his ranks that are interested. So if he knows that there are people in the ranks that are interested, then of course there are people within the ranks that are not interested. That are just, again, coming here for a feel-good service. And if that's what you need to go out there in the cares of the world, mashallah. But the bill always comes due. A member's interest can only be in one direction, and having traveled over the war, over the war, over the road years before the prophet knows every member is along the road, or knows where every member is along the road. So that means the spirit of the prophet is here tonight. The spirit of the prophet is within you. The nearest place to find Allah is in the heart. And the spirit of the Prophet Noble Juali, if we study, if we continue to study, is within us. So he knows the level of competence we have, the level of, 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 of interest that we have in this movement. And it shows through your works. It says in the Quran of Mecca that you will be judged by your very body parts. So that means by your labors. If you, if, you, if you go up and people believe that when you go up to Jinnah and your tongue is worn out more than your body, that means you've been flapping your gums too much and you've not been working. That's what we're talking about. But alas, um, you know, that is just one portion of my message today. You know, we, it's, it's getting far too long that our movement has been everything or has been going every which way except for the right direction as a whole. We have to get it together. We have to check ourselves before we go check anyone else. I have to check myself before I go check anyone else. But this is me expressing to you what my thoughts are because time is running out. This is an, an, another, another phrase we use all the time is time never was when man was not. But it's about to come that time where man will cease to exist and time will be following it. So what are we going to do about it? We have to at least att attempt to lay the foundation for our future generations. Because that's what it's about. It's about them babies. We don't want to leave our children dust. We don't want to leave our children without the, the, the without any type of uh, 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 hope or again any estate. That's why they're upset now. That's why they're mad now. That's why they're disrespecting now. Because we, we ain't leaving them nothing. There's nothing for them to fall upon. Islam? <laughs>